Hello, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, family. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to be here. But uh, let me know that you, you can hear me okay. Is this too loud? Is this too low? Or is this okay? Yeah? Yeah, it's perfect. Thank you. Fun okay, fantastic. Welcome, everyone. Good morning. Um, and I just want to say thank you to the house. Thank you to PI for the opportunity to speak. You know, I do not take this for granted. I'm so, so excited. And I just give God all the glory. You know, it's been a beautiful time and, you know, I would, I'm just excited to also speak on, you know, on this as well. But first of all, the prayer, Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day. We just give you all the glory, honor, and on, you know, all the honor and praise. I ask that you will use me as a vessel for your people. Let my words be encouragement and be a blessing. Ascent of days, wise one, I ask that you will speak in this house today. I thank you for what you're going to do. Holy Spirit, enlighten our hearts. Let the core and center of us be open to receive your perspective in Jesus' name. Um, we've learned so much. Oh my God, the 23rd day has been so amazing. And, um, I, you know, I think for me, what I want to do is just add to all that has been sent. We've learned so much, you know, what it, what we've also, I think a big takeaway for me is that I've been reminded that I have a part to play as well in me being fit for purpose. You know, whether it's my service, my competence, you know, my trust in God to see beyond limitations and character amongst others. You know, it's been a lot to take and a reminder as well, you know, and a beautiful way to usher us into the new year. So, but more than anything, I think my biggest takeaway from all that I have had so far has been that everything to, that happened to, happens to us happens to us for a reason. And it's all part of God's plan and, you know, God's plan to lead us into our purpose. And I will be speaking and added to that conversation today. And, you know, I ask that the Lord will speak through me and, you know, my, it will not be my words, but it, it will be his words. Um, I actually, you know, plan to speak on something else, but during my Bible study a few days ago, the Holy Spirit, you know, dropped in my heart to speak on this. And, you know, it, it just made a lot of sense. Um, so I, first of all, when I say um, I am reminded that everything that happens to us is part of God's plan, I think a, a verse that comes to mind is Philippians 2.13. I'm sure it's, all, it's a lot of us are favorites. So for it says, um, for it is not your our strength, but it is God who effectively is at work in us to will and to walk, strengthening, energizing, and creating in us a longing and the ability to fulfill purpose for his good pleasure. When I read that, especially the last line, it says it creates in us a longing and the ability. So when I read that, it means that it is not in my strength. It is not in my power. I am not the one that would orchestrate my life. The burden, the longings, everything that God has dropped and placed in our hearts is for a reason and it's for his good pleasure. I think when I see that, it takes a lot of pressure off me. It makes pain different. It, you know, it gives me a different perspective for pain. And, you know, I will be uncovering that in a minute. If I was going to give this a title, you know, I would call it embracing every chapter of our journey as part of God's plan to equip us and bring us, you know, and get us fit for purpose. What does that mean? It means, like I said earlier, everything happens to us for a reason. You know, it's like pieces of a puzzle that God is putting together. Every piece, whether good or tough, is helping us become the person and step into the space that God has meant for us. Um, today, I'm going to be looking at uh, lessons from 1 Samuel 17, reading from 17 to 50. And we're going to be looking at one of my favorite characters, David, and, you know, his encounter with uh, Goliath. And that's where I'll be teaching from today. It's quite a lengthy verse, but I probably just speak, you know, I'll, I'll just skip through. Because I think there are core, core verses here that, you know, I'm going to be speaking on. So I read, um, one day Jess said to David, and this is from chapter 17. Take this basket of roasted grain and this 10 loaves of bread and carry them quickly to your brothers and give this 10 cuts of cheese to their captain. See how your brothers are getting along and bring back a report on how they are doing. I'm going to skip to another, you know, I'm going to skip and just read the relevant bits. So David left the sheep with another shepherd and set out early the next morning with gifts as Jess has directed him. He arrived at the camp just as the Israelite armies was leaving for the battlefield with shouts and battle cries. Soon the Israelites and Philistine forces stood facing each other, army against army. Um, then David heard um, him shout, which is Goliath. 
his usual turns to the army of Israel. As soon as the Israelites army saw him, they began to run away in fright. Have you seen the giant? The man asks, you know, he, he comes out every day to defile Israel. David asks the soldiers standing nearby, what would a man get for killing this Philistine and, asks, and ending his defiance of Israel? Who is this pagan Philistine anyway that he's allowed to defy, defy the armies of the living God? And those men gave David the same reply. They said, yes, this is the reward for killing him. And they went ahead to spell it out. Um, when David's brother heard him talking to the men, he was angry. He says, what are you doing here anyway? He demanded, what about the few ships you are supposed to be taking care of? I know about your pride and deceit. And I'll jump to where, you know, David uh, encountered, encountered Saul. And, you know, he told Saul he was going to fight. And, you know, for, he says, I will fight him. Don't be ridiculous, Saul says. There's no way you can fight this Philistine and possibly win. You're only a boy. You know, he's been a man of war since his youth. But David persisted. I have been taking care of my father's sheep and goats, he said. When a lion or a bear comes to steal a lamb from the flock, I go after it with a club and I rescue the lamb from its mouth. Even, the, even if the animal turns on me, I catch it by the jaw and I club it to death. I have done this for both lions and bear. And I would do it to this pagan Philistines too, for he has defiled the army of the living God. Um, the Lord who rescued me from the claws of the lion and the bear will rescue me from this Philistine, says, Paul finally consented. All right, go ahead, he says, and may the Lord be with you. Then Saul gives David his armor, a bronze helmet and a coat of mail. David puts it on, strapped the swords over it and took a step or two to see what it would, look, what it would feel like. For he had never won such a thing before. I can't go in this, he protested to Saul. I'm not used to this. So David took them off. He picked up five smooth stones from the stream and then put them into his shepherd bag. And um, I, I jumped to where obviously he encounters uh, Goliath and he says, I come to you with my sword, my spear, my javelin. But, I, you know, I, 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 you come to me with your spear, your sword, your spear, your javelin. But I come to you in the name of God, the Lord of the angel armies and the Lord of the angel uh, armies of Israel, whom you have defiled. Today, the Lord will conquer you and I will kill you and cut off your head. I stop here. Some key lessons I have penned down today from this story that really spoke to me, you know, about what we are speaking today, being fit for purpose. Number one key lesson and reminder for me, you know, is God will use the mundane things to move us into purpose. David was sent to, just like every other day, you know, to send supply to his brothers, which is what we we'll probably do, you know, like all of us running around, go about our day doing the most basic things. And who would have ever thought that that was the day that would change David's life? Knowing that the God we serve can use anything, we must leave our life post postured to receive even the most seemingly, you know, receive things from even the most seemingly mundane places. Whatever, has, what, whatever God has put in us, he would use it. You know, David would never have known that this very, you know, errand would change the entire trajectory of his life. This would be that chance, chance moments that would change his entire life. So, you know, he arrived, you know, even, even as he arrived at the camp, he could have arrived later, he could have arrived, you know, before, but he arrived at the exact time, that time that needed to pick his curiosity, that time that needed for, you know, that was needed for him to hear Goliath come and speak. And, and you know, when I read this, that just means that nothing is random with God. Everything has been orchestrated for a purpose. The bad things, the pain, the things that we, you know, we pray God to take away. Every single thing is a reason and is leading us closer to purpose. The second thing as well is familiarity. The familiarity of those closest to us can be a hindrance to our purpose. His brothers didn't believe him. They didn't want him there. He seemed like a nuisance. He should be at home tending to his few sheep at home. They were probably embarrassed by their little brothers. And, you know, obviously they wanted to, you know, macho stance and macho status. And this little boy running around camp asking questions. Even Paul as well did not believe him and probably allowed him to fight because there was no one else there. You know, counsel is very needed. Yes, I understand that. But we need to understand that sometimes God has prepared things in us that are for us only. He has, you know, prepared things in us in isolation 
that only us can discern, that only us can know. And we also have to know when we are ready, to, you know, when God is pushing us into those opportunities that will be cockpits that will catapult us, catapult us into the manifestation of his purpose. You know, Paul said to him, don't be ridiculous. There's no way you can fight this person. There's no way you can fight, you, you can win. You know, you're just a boy. You're just, and this is a man that has, you know, fought war all of his life. But Bez, uh, David persisted. He knew that he, he could do this. You know, so I'm sure a lot of us have been, you know, faced with challenges and situation that seems so scary. Everyone says you can't do it. Everyone says it has not been done before. But, you know, this is another reminder to know that it is not, it is for his good pleasure. Every longing, every desire, everything that God has placed in your heart that has no reference, he would make sure that it, it, it comes to pass because it is for his good pleasure. You know, David said, I've been taking care of my father's sheep and goats and when a bear and a, a, you know uh, comes to steal you know I, I i club them to death he alone knew that he had the power to do it no one saw that when he was in the wilderness and practicing and god was preparing him for this moment so more than ever i think this is a you know this is a reminder for us that regardless of whatever you know the the, the crowd thinks whatever regardless of whatever people think that we cannot do we must know who our god is we must have the same mindset as david and know that with god God on our side, we are victorious. I think, you know, I, I'm going to share a little story as well for uh, about my life. You know, I think I've shared bits and pieces of it here and there, but really and truly, you know, I think, you know, I, I'll probably just, you know, give a, whole, a summary in a nutshell. In 2021, you know, I, I had a flourishing business, you know, uh, uh, I had a business that I, by the grace of God, was doing very well. But in 2021, God, you know, asked me to change my entire Entire business model, you know, he told he told me to stop um, uh, some revenue streams, and um, you know, some of my revenue streams that were even the most profitable. He told me to increase my prices and take only business that could pay my price. He, and this is all just coming out of, of 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 COVID, and obviously coming out of an economy that is just starting to find its feet. He told me to pause. I had a second business, a second retail business as well. He told me to pause on it. You know, he told me to act, like literally rest and let go and let him lead my provision, you know? And finally, he told me that I will start to teach. I will start to teach my expertise. I will start to teach courses. I will start to, you know, speak up in my industry and be a voice. You know, I thought this was a little thing. I thought this was, you know, I gave God a lot of, you know, I asked him for a lot of confirmations and I dragged my feet for so many months. And I remember, okay, when I finally decided to do my first master class, which was an in-person design class, you know, I thought it was just a small thing. You know, I was, nothing was happening. We we're just coming out of COVID. And I would just do a small thing. And when I did that small thing, which I, you know, I probably asked God for so many confirmations and finally did it, you know, I realized that this thing was beyond just a class. God actually wanted me to build an entire business that was going to be almost an academy, training people in my industry. You know, it was, it was, it was really, really, it was really, really tough to do that because I knew what would be required from me to do that. That means I need to shut down a lot of things because I had to give my concentration and my attention to a lot of things. A lot of people thought I was mad when I decided to actually you know step out from my business and shut down a lot of things that were making me a lot of money and you know do what God said you know it seems silly because even at that point in time I had just come up some amazing in short that one of the my top events of my entire career that was probably an event of the year you know and I should have been riding on that momentum which is what everyone said to me but God said stop every single thing at that time it seemed mad it seemed like you know how, how was I going to survive but that one thing that I did changed my entire life. That one thing I did, you know, made me go through the process to restructure my knowledge, my expertise, and my experience into a package that I could sell. I went through an upgrade that helped me upgrade my knowledge beyond what I had mastered, refine my entire business process. You know, going through that process helped me, you know, gain the knowledge to understand my value and learn how to highlight it and articulate it in a way that I could charge premium for it. 
since 2021, it's been learning, it's been training, it's been one thing after the other, intense learning and growing. An overall of, uh, you know, a total overhaul of myself, my business model, my skill and my structure. Why am I giving this story? You know, because, you know, it, it's like, like David, everyone taught thought I was crazy. Everyone thought, you know, why are you just leaving money on the table? You're already probably top one in the industry. Why are you not, you know, why would you just withdraw and not take business, you know? But, you know, I, I, I didn't understand what God was doing at the time, you know, but I just obeyed. And I'll get to the end, you know, I, 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 I'll, I'll get to the end of this, you know, later down in the, in the, in the, you know, later down today. But I think for me, why I shared this story is that there's a place for counsel, like I said, and there's a place for discerning what God is leading you into and the instructions and opportunities and spaces that he's asking you to step into, no matter the challenge or how challenging it may seem. Trust me, walking with God, you can never fail. This is what builds up your faith to be able to go through, go through those high places of challenges and responsibilities that will make you stronger. You know, one of my favorite verses as well, Habakkuk 3, uh, uh, 3, 19 says, the Lord is my strength and my source of courage, my invincible army. He has made my feet steady and sure like hind's feet. And he makes me walk forward with spiritual confidence, on high places of challenges and responsibilities. There's going to be challenges. There's going to be re responsibilities that seem like mountains that we cannot overcome. But these things are almost like, you know, setups for us to step into higher, to expand our mindset, to expand our faith. Because where we're going to, we need those type of faith to be able to, able to handle the capacity that God is asking us to walk into. You know, like I said, also bringing it back to me, you know, I, I, when I did this thing in 2021, going to all I did was learn courses after courses after courses. I took no business. Everything that I took was the things that God brought to me. You know, at some point I was so, you know, I was confused. I did not understand. People would offer me jobs. I would turn it down because it didn't meet my minimum because I had like almost 10x my prices. You know, so I went from like doing like 20 jobs in a year to do like maybe five and six. But what happened was those five and six were, you know, the profit I got from those five and six were probably what I would get from like five on six jobs together. But still, it did not make sense because I, I had all this time on my hand and God was just telling me, sit still, you know. And um, <laughs> like I said. <laughs> Oh my God, you know, that, uh, anyways, um, just remembering it, you know, I'm just in awe of God, you know, so there are some fights that are for us to fight only, you know, I remember, imagine Daniel, uh, Saul telling Daniel, there's no way you can fight this Philistines and poss possibly win. Imagine someone up in, uh, in, 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 someone up in authority, like the president telling us something is impossible. You know, some of us, myself included, would probably agree and affect uh, and accept defeat but from this story we are reminded that we must know god for ourselves and we must know what he is preparing us for you know whether it's pain we have gone through whether it's a challenge we are we are you know he's taking us to we need to understand that a deliverer can only be someone who can give language and insight to a pain that they have been through Everything is a reason. The struggle, the setback, the delay, the subtraction, the pain, everything is God's preparation for the place that he's sending us to. Um, when we read Acts 13, 36, that says, when David served God's purpose in his generation, he fell asleep and was buried you know, with his ancestors and his body decayed. We know that it is beyond us. So whatever pain we are feeling now, whatever the struggle or whatever the challenge or space that God is asking us to step into, to, it is beyond us. It is for God's purpose to serve our, our generation. And all these are part of the puzzle to take us to where he's taking us to. The number three lesson for me is there is a bespoke template for your purpose. He was offered, you know, what it is, what everyone will use to fight a battle. Heavy armor, helmet, sword and everything else that he needed for the fight. It was probably offered in love, you know, supports to ensure his victory. But trust me, it would have been the end of David if he, you know, stepped into any of all those things. The story would probably not have gone like this. It probably, you know, and this is this is where, you know, he would probably have missed that point of inflection, that point that would, you know, would have that brought his, his biggest transformation and his biggest elevation. And this is a reminder for us as well, as much as it's nice 
to go with the head mentality, go with, you know, everything that God has, you know, what everyone is doing and what, you know, we see everyone doing. We must go and sit with God and find out what our own template is. You know, we must, we must, we must break away from the crowd because at the end of the day, he called us the head. He called us the head and not the tail. So what that means is every single one of us is a head. We are the, where, you know, why pay setter. We have the blueprints. We bring the blueprint. So when we have that mentality, we must understand that beyond just doing the easy things, we are not called to do the easy things. God has created us to walk in our own unique path, our own mode of operation with unique tools and unique blueprints that he has put in our hand. Our pathway is for only us and we must be careful to not to be influenced by, you know, everyone else and what is happening around us because, you know, we just feel everyone is doing the same thing. Um, yeah, you know, and, and, and applying this also to my story as well, it was so easy to go with the, with the advice of everyone else around me that told me I was mad. You know, in short, you know, everyone, every, everyone said to me, and I quote, we're just coming out of COVID. This is the time to intensify your efforts. You know, this is a time for you to, you know, up your marketing. This is a time for you to, you know, do everything you can do to maximize the potential, you know, the, the, the momentum that you already have. But God was telling me to slow down and spend time with him. God God was telling me to, you know, to, 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 to surrender my business and let him lead me in a different direction. You know, in chapter 40, you know, we see when David picked up five smooth stones from the stream and put them in a shepherd's bag. You know, that seems stupid. Every single person there was, you know, clothed in armor. Every single person there was decked out in armor. You know, every single person there was, you know, was, 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 you know, these are people that have been trained and this little boy is picking up stones and slings. Who does that? But that was his superpower. That was his space. That was the only thing that God would have used and God had fashioned for uh, David to kill Goliath with stones and a sling. And that was even what spoke the loudest because he was different. He killed different. He fought different because he knew his God and that was all that he focused on. You know, so, you know, this is also another reminder. What is that bespoke blueprint that God has given you that no one understands? What is that thing that God has laid in your heart, but you are afraid to step out to do because there's no reference and there are no examples? I think we must normalize winning. We must normalize original blueprints. We must normalize, every, you know, being the first. We read a lot of all the stories in the Bible and it seems that these people stepped out to do things that had never been done before. This should be normal. This should be normal for us as believers because it's the same God. Um, the fourth reminder for me from this verse is he trusted God, not his abilities. The God who rescued me from the claws of the lion and the bears will rescue me from this Philistine. That's what David said. He trusted God. He looked at God. He did not see his limitations. He saw how big his God is. The reason we are anchored in God is for us to allow him to steer the sheep that is our purpose. The anchor of the sheep is what holds its hold. The anchor of the sheep is what holds it steady. And our anchor in God is what holds us steady. We are not driving the ship. So beyond that, we must see beyond our limitations, beyond our pain, beyond our past, beyond the challenges in front of us, beyond where we come from, our status. We have to understand that all of these things have been fashioned as an advantage for God. How are you going to tell that story? How would you give God the glory if it was just so simple and it was just so predictable? God operates in difficult things. God operates in challenging things. But we must see God and take, you know, to stick our eyes off that mountain and see God, you know, and see God for what he is. And, you know, this also reminds me of Gideon. When God met him and when the angel met him, he said, mighty warrior, that was present tense. He did not see all the limitation that, you know, and, 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 and excuses that, you know, Gideon spoke about because in God's eyes, he was already a mighty warrior. So part of our fitness for purpose, part of how we must look to ourselves to step into purpose is we must see beyond our, our limitations. The battle is the Lord and our victory is for his glory. David said, this is the Lord's battle and he will give it to us. You know, all things work together for us. We've been, we know that David had already won before he left his house to take those supplies to the camp. 
He had already won because God had already given him the blueprint. God had already prepared him. God had already prepared every single thing that he needed for to win that battle that day. David just had to step into al alignment that day to win that battle. Number five, the, you know, the fifth, the fifth takeaway from me is the challenges we face will, you know, will be the challenge. The challenges we face will be the catalyst that bring forth our wealth. David needed to fight Goliath that day to bring forth his wealthy place. It was that single opportunity that brought about his breakthrough, his reward, his elevation. You know, the Bible says Paul, you know, Paul didn't allow him to go home after that. It was an automatic acceleration into purpose and into elevation, you know, which, you know, this, this reminds me that, you know, God has placed junctions of breakthroughs on the roadmap of our lives to propel us into our wealthy place. They will look like challenges. They will look like impossible achievements. But that is why we need to know that we need to look to God and not to ourselves. Our increase, our, pros our prosperity, our wealth, our elevation are all tied to us stepping into these challenges, knowing that God will see us through. David stepped to face, you know, David stepped up to, to, to face his uh, Goliath on that day. And that was what changed his entire story. Remember, the, you know, like I read in Philippians 2.13, it's God that creates in us the longing and the ability to fulfill purpose. It was God that creates, created the longing in him that day. David he shot, immediately he dropped and he, he stepped into that camp. He was, he was, he was, he was frantic to fight Goliath. That was God that placed that longing in his heart. He was curious. He, you know, God set it up in a way that he was just interested in the reward, in everything that was going on. He was interested. That was God. It was not him because in in a in the, in the normal in the normal scale and in the, in the normal setup of things, there's no way that David should should fight Goliath. Everyone was afraid. These are men that have been skilled in war and warfare. There's no way in in his right mind that David should want to fight Goliath. But God placed that longing in him that day, and it was all part of God's plan. And I think for me, when I read this, I am just, you know, it, it just comes to mind that beyond just living our lives and waking up, we must have, we, we must, we must, you know, we must, we must be discerning to the things that God has placed in our hearts. We must have, you know, th there must be some sort of curiosity and interest into the situation that God is placing in front of us. We must be alert and be postured as believers to step into the things that God is placing in us because David knew he was ready. No one had to tell David he was ready. Everyone told him he could not do it. But David knew he was ready. David knew he was ready. So we must learn that we must live from a place of surrender, even in fear. But we must understand that beyond anything, every single thing that God has placed in us is a reason for it. You know, and to uh, conclude my story, like I said, <clears throat> you know, how God changed my business model and how, you know, he literally... Um, stead the sheep of everything that I stand on today you know and 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 the, the you know it, two years into it I am beginning to see why he did that you know God has you know in going through that process I've been able to refine my processes my systems I've been able to increase my value I've been able to you know to to literally give language to my value and market it and highlight it and charge premium for it you know, this has changed every single thing that I thought was possible. Every goal of profit that I've penned down on paper is is being is be, like it's not it's it's it's, be, it's just been the starting point. You know, and now I have another business that I'm about to launch the the uh, the training business, and I have a waiting list of hundreds of people from all around the world, from Africa, from you know, from Nigeria, from everywhere. I would not have done this by myself. It's not possible that I would have been able to do this by myself. But 2021, it looked like I was, you know, going behind. It looked like I was, you know, I was, I was, I was, you know, I, I felt like, you know, I had lost everything. In short, honestly, that was the feeling. I felt like, you know, I, I was just, I was just still, like I was not doing anything because God did not give me permission to do anything. All he said was go and learn. But one thing I know that he broke away from me is, you know, he, he removed me from the high alert hustle. You know, the hustle out of fear, the hustle out of lack, you know, having a lack mindset, thinking that, you know, I have to do and go over and beyond to try to get get what I need. 
because every single day, every single month, I had an event and God provided for me. So what I have learned now is wealth is not from me. It's not about my hustle. It's not about what others, what others are doing. It's about God. 2021, this month alone, you know, last year, even I remember people asking me last year, um, you know, oh, it's, it's, it's the end of the year. You know, you should be so busy now because, you know, we used to be so busy till the next year, have bookings for six months into the new year. And I was just quiet. You know, I'm like, mm, you know, I'm just I'm taking time off work, blah, blah, blah. And just this, just this month is being like, oh my God, an avalanche of things. What the, the, one of the events I'm working on now, the profit from that event will probably, the, you know, the profit I'll make in one year. It's probably my most profitable event I've made in my entire career. And that is just from one event. And how did that come about? Because I was able to reposition myself. I was able to market myself in a way that shows my maximum value. I have learned the language to, you know, to present my value in a way that I know that I am the top one. And that is because God has showed me and gave me a roadmap on how to do this. There's no way I would have not been with everyone else struggling for a space that, you know, was already oversaturated. But God pulled me out of it. God gave me a new blueprint. It seemed stupid. It seemed like, you know, it was, it, it, I was doing something crazy. But now I have, you know, he has also asked me to start my other businesses that I closed down because I have now learned how to scale. I have not learned how to handle the multiple businesses. Not also that he also, you know, during that time, he also taught me how to handle money, how to steward my money, how to steward my finances, because I had less than what I would normally have. So all this was to propel me into everything that God was preparing me for. And if I had not gone with that, I probably would have missed it. Everything I have dreamt about is coming to pass now. And I know that the, re the single reason why I did that was step out from, you know, the crowd, step out from my own understanding and just obey God. It seemed stupid. It seemed silly. It seemed like, you know, I was, I, I felt like I was starting all over again. But that was what was necessary for God to give me all the things I've been praying to him about. So, you know, God is, God is, God is, God has a plan. There's a, you know, there's, there's a, there's a, there's a method to it all. There's a reason for it all, you know, and, 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 and the whole point of a journey of purpose is we want to mirror David and at the end of the day, serve God's purpose in our generation, you know, and we pray that we will walk into everything that God has called us to. We will not settle for less in anything. We ask that the Holy Spirit would help us to step into those places that seem like it cannot be done. Those places that seem like it is not possible. We must, I, you know, we must be postured to receive from this, from the most ordinary places, from the most ordinary places. I remember when God told me, you know, to join IRA. You know, I had never joined a community. I had never, you know, I have never, you know, I was one of those people, church hurt and everything. I stepped away from everything. I remember when, you know, he randomly on Instagram, he told me to join. And I'm like, okay, you know, uh, I'd never known any, you know, I, 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 I've I, never been here before, you know, and I joined and I clicked on the link and I joined. I think I saw something on uh, PI's page, Legacy, because he was speaking to me about Legacy at that time. And I joined. And two years in is almost like, oh my God, like I have been given fuel. I have been given life. I have been given, you know, a place where I'm planted in Manu, where I have grown, where I have, I have, I have encountered God. Nothing is random. God will use anything to trust you into purpose. Now I'm here speaking. Would I, as in, it's not, this would not have been possible two years ago. I would not, I, I don't, I never saw myself as a speaker. I never saw myself as, you know, a teacher. I never saw myself as a lot of the things that I said with my mouth that I could not do. But I'm doing them now. And I'm just laughing because I'm just looking. I'm only a vessel. I'm just here seeing all that God is doing through me. And really, that is really the thing. I think when we think about it in that way, when we understand that he's doing these things through us, so that fear really is the lie of the devil. That's that that overwhelm, that depression, that you know anxiety. All of that is the lie of the devil to keep us stuck. 
there's a reason. There's a reason. Even that pain, that pain that God has made you go through, that is because you are going to deliver orders from that as well. You're go- you know, you can only give language to what you've, been, you're, what you've gone through. You can only give language to what you've gone through. So, you know, more than ever, you know, I, I really want us to understand that the same way that we invest in our fitness in every part of life, the same way we invest in our businesses, the same way that we invest in every single other pillar of our lives, we must take seriously to feed in our spirit as well, which is what this exercise is about. We want to make sure that this is not just words for us to just gather and speak but this is words that we must take to heart and really understand that every single thing that we desire, that wealth, that place, that land, that, that you know, that thing that seems like it's so impossible, that seems like we're the minority, we're the ones that is disadvantaged, it is not true. That same God that can bring down a Goliath with slings and stones is still the same one that can give you every single thing that you dream about every single thing that you desire, you will go through the pain. Yes, he will allow it. But how can you say, how can you testify and how can you tell others about God if you have no reference, if you have no story? So more than ever, more than ever, more than ever, I applaud all of us to, you know, do 2024 differently. Do 24 differently. Let us have God. Let us let God lead us as his shepherd. There's a plan. There's a plan, no matter how simple. Now, even, you know, uh, you know, I, I know Pia always talks about it, like relationship. I know that's one of her things she always talks about. You know, it's uh, for someone like me, I'm such an introvert. Like I'm, you know, I'm so I just give me my design. Just give me my creativity. Just give me like, you know, my, my, my thing. And I'm good. You know, but just a lot of the things, the way I see life now and the way that I just embrace every single thing, whether it's a driver, whether it's a, I'm going into a shop, whether it's anything right now, I almost wake up expectant for God to move in the smallest places and with the smallest things. I do not want to miss it. So I posture myself to be able to discern and to be able to see all that he's doing from the smallest places from my staff, from my team, from anyone, really. God will use anyone. Who would have thought that God would give victory to Israel from a shepherd boy that would just... And, I, you know, it's funny how the, 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 the Bible even spelt it out, taking care of his few sheep. It was not even a lot. So this was, you know, in the sense of things, he was just a... He was, he was, he was unforgettable. Like, he was no one, really. In the grand scheme of things, David was no one. But in in the twinkle of an eye, his story changed. In the twinkle of an eye, just going to, you know, um, deliver bread changed everything for David. And I can apply that in my life today because this is a testimony for me as well. God telling me to step back, which, you know, to, to, to everyone thought it was, it was, it was, it was debt and stagnance to my business. I, at some point, you know, thought it was, I knew, I believed, but it was just very painful that I had all these things in front of me and I could not take them. God told me, no, don't take anything, shut down everything and just rest. I was waking, I shut in the, I, I've had my business for over 10, I think I'm 10 this year. This was the first time I had a routine. I had a life. I would wake up. I would pray. I could go to the gym. I could spend time with my family. I never had that because I was just busy trying to build a business. And I was hold, and I realized that, you know, in hindsight, that I was holding on to that thing so much. And it was distracting me from all the other places God was trying to take me to. I thought that was, you know, you know, when you when you want something so bad and you're so excited, I've, I've always wanted to be, I've always wanted to design. I've always, it's been a dream for so long, even from corporate, resigning from corporate to, you know, to start a business. And, you know, seeing my dreams come to pass and seeing God bless me in the way that he has. Is, 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 you know, it can, it's, it's very um, humbling. And I held on to that, not understanding that this was just, in the pillar of a million, this was just one pillar. God was like, you know, he was trying to cut off the emotions and cut, like come out from this place. This is just one thing. This same grace that you have, you have it for so many other things. And I had to 
obey. I had to step away and know that, you know, even in my retail business, I have the same reactions when I do business with people. It's the same grace because it's not in my power. In my teaching now, you know, I, I do one-on-ones. I, you know, I'm not, I, I've not even launched my first course. I have a waiting list of almost 200 people. And I'm like, God, how? From everywhere. I'm like, how? Like, how is this even possible? Please, what am I, what am, what do they see? Because I don't see anything. And this is not, you know, it's not, I'm not trying to be, it's really like, to me, this is what I love. I would do this for free. So I don't see that. I don't see any effort because I know it has to be God. Because this is something that I love and we do in a closet without even any visibility. But it is God. God is teaching me wealth. God is teaching me, you know, to, 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 be, to be comfortable in capacity, to be comfortable in more. And it could have only been God. I would have been fine in the little space that I was in. But, you know, I, I say, I, I, I think I'm, 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 I'm standing on this because I know our, our, our team this year also is our wealthy place. And, you know, and more than ever, we need to also be reminded that God is still doing a new thing. You know, we need to go back to those things that God has told us to do. We need to go back to those things that God has asked us to do that seem afraid. Trust me, your, 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 your generational wealth is on the other side of that thing that he's asked you to do. That may seem like, you know, you know, embarrassing or might seem that it's going to stagnate you. You know, we need to go back and pick up the journals. We need to go back and pick up the promises. We need to go back and pick up all the things that God has asked us to do. And like David, understand that whatever he has asked you, he has already prepared you in the wilderness with the bears and the lions. He's already equipped you to do everything and do it well. And not just do it in a way that is comparable. Do it in a way that it will be loud when the evidence is there. He will be loud. He'll do it in such a loud way that it can only be God that will catapult you into your, you know, your, your, your into, into massive elevation. That is for his glory, because at the end of the day, it's all for his glory. Like we saw, it's all for his glory. It's all for his glory. Um, um, as we round up, I really just want all of us to just have a quiet time and just think on those things and make a decision in our hearts today. You know, I, I'm sure you. It comes to your mind as a, as a, as you hear me. What is that thing? Let us make. Let us stand it together in agreement that this year, beyond just hearing, we're going to be doers as well. The prophecy has come for this is a wealthy place. We are kings. We are queens. This is a. This is an altar where God has blessed us with wealth. So we must understand that this journey is also not a journey of isolation. All of us, you know, a lot of people have shared has, has their stories. And that was even what encouraged me to share because I've been blessed from the stories of others as well. And I know that this place has blessed me. The things I've had that has given me the, you know, the, the, the boldness, the things that I've had that's given me, you know, the, 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 the strength to step out, out of me and do things that were beyond me, that I thought were beyond me. But now I look back and I laugh and I'm like, oh my God, why was I so afraid? Let us take that quiet time and just decide that this today, we would allow God be our shepherd. You know, um, I'm just going to read Psalm 23, just, you know, and, and just speak all over us. The Lord is our shepherd to feed, to guide and to shield us. We shall not want he, he, he lets us to lie down in green pastures. He leads us beside still and quiet waters. He refreshes and restores our soul, our life. He leads us into paths of righteousness for his name's sake. It's for his name's sake. Even though we walk through sunless valleys of the shadow of death, we will fear no evil for he is with us. He's our rod to protect our staff to guide. They comfort and they console us. He prepares a table before us in the presence of our enemies. He anointed and refreshes our head with oil. Our cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. You know, this, this, uh, this, 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 this verse has come to mean so much to me in, 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 in you know, I think this when I joined the Alacrity Prayers with Joyce, you know, this, this verse has taken on a whole new, angle in my life you know I literally anoint myself with oil every day 
and I say to myself, you know, I'm a, you know, I, I, I anointed and refreshed my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. He didn't say some days. He said all the days of your life. God, goodness and mercy will follow you. So when we stand on this verse and when we stand, we are not in the driver's seat. It is all God. It is, we're supposed to do impossible things. We're supposed to be strong and do exploits. We're supposed to do those things that the world cannot understand. That's our identity. We're not here to do small things. Because we, you know, we remember that this is not for us. It's not for the material things of it. Yes, it is there. But God is making us want, wanting us to look beyond that. Look, you know, we, 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 have, we have generations to impact. We have legacies to, 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 to write. So more than ever, I would want us to encourage ourselves. And in 2024, we're not going to be in our emotions. This is not, we're not living life based on, you know, being stirred by emotions. We have a God that has given us a blueprint to do it all. We have, we have a God that has given us every single thing for to fulfill our purpose for his good pleasure. So let this 2023, 2024, by the time we meet next year, for another fit for purpose. Let it just be a testimony time of all that God has done from 2024. This is what, you know, fit for purpose did. This was the seed that was fit for purpose in 2024. So in 2025, we can all rejoice and have a praise party to just give God back all the glory because this would bear seed, sorry, bear fruit. I hope we've all been blessed. I hope we've all been encouraged. Um, more than ever, you know, I, I know I have been blessed from this series and even from last year, I still go back to the videos as well every time to watch. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm just excited for the opportunity as well to speak and share my story. You know, I, I, I love this, this place and, and, you know, I'm just really encouraged as well that, you know, uh, we would step out and step into our purpose and do all what God has asked us to do and is calling us to do. You know, no matter how it seems, no matter how difficult it seems, I ask that we would, you know, we will step out because we have a God that is bigger than any mountain that we can ever see. Any mountain that we can ever see. He is good. He is good. I say when I got the job, I think I, I mentioned it to PI. It was like a joke. And the Holy Spirit asked me the exact, he told me the exact price. He told me exactly what to quote for. When I saw, when I heard the number, I was, I was afraid. I'm like, how, in what, how is this possible that someone is going to pay me this money? How am I going to quote for this? This is like 10 times what I would normally quote. He gave me an, he's like, quote this and do not go below it. She's going to pay it. I'm like, what? How is this even possible? But there's no way I would have done that in my strength. It's not possible. I quoted and they paid me. They paid me what I was using, but profit I'll buy, I can buy a house from it. I, I don't know what I did. I don't know what I'm delivering, but that's God. That's the God that we serve. When he catapults you, it does not make sense. When he rewards, it does not make sense. It does not make sense. It doesn't make sense. I'm still in awe. My family is, everyone's mouth is open. Because two years, just 2023, I, you know, I, I was laughing. I'm like, God, I went back. God sent me back to school. Like I'm, I'm in school. It was one course after the other, one mentor, one, you know, one day. So it was one thing. I was in school every, even through Christmas, even through, I was, I did like courses and I was just learning. For two years, I was just learning. I'm just coming out of it. And the first month, God has changed my entire life. Just in the first month. It did not make sense. Everyone thought I was mad. Ugo, where have you been? You know, Ugo, where have you been? Like, ah, well, your business, there's nothing happening on your Instagram. I said, yeah, so I mean, I'm in school. It didn't make sense, but I make sense now because now I can do all and step into all those things that God has asked me to step into and I can handle it and I can handle the wealth that he's bringing to my life. Um, thank you, House. Thank you for this opportunity. I hope we've been blessed. And, um, you know, I like to encourage us as well as we go out, our, you know, about our day to be, you know, to be encouraged to know that 
These testimonies are not shared because of anything, but they're shared to be encourage all of us. Same way I've been blessed from everyone else's testimony. God can do the impossible. Um, also remember that this we have other watches as well. You know, I encourage you to join. Watch, you know, we have another watch by 9 a.m. We have another one, the worship watch by 12 noon. We have another watch by 3 p.m., 9 p.m., our Bible study, which is, you know, my absolute favorite. We have another watch midnight. We have 3 a.m. And uh, we're back here at 6 a.m. in the morning. So um, <clears throat> thank you, everyone, for joining. I ask that, you know, I pray that God would, you know, bless your day and just lead you in Jesus' name. Amen. Happy birthday, Sister Mudupe. Happy birthday. Wish you all that God, you know, God's blessings and grace in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, people. Thank you, family. Thank you. God bless you.